Hello everyone, this is Daniel and welcome to part uh, 18, I believe, of this character creation tutorial series. Uh, so, the last thing you saw was probably the time lapse of me working on these hair parts. Actually, now that I look at it, there are a couple of things I want to fix. But, you know, all in all, it was it shouldn't be super difficult. It, it, it was just basic modeling. It's not a super complicated part as well. Uh, just a, a little patch of, of hair after all. So I hope that it all went well for you. Um, yeah, so pretty sure you'll, be, you'll, you would be able to figure something out there. So uh, I actually left this part though. This part I thought would be a bit more challenging, so I wanted to show it in video. And also, um, I want to quickly talk about something in re that relates to character modeling in general. Uh, as you're modeling and working on your character, you will sometimes find mistakes as you go that you made like some before. For example, it looks like the legs are you know in line with the reference, but it turns out they're quite a, a bit too thin. Um, and it does it does have an impact like the legs look a bit weak they should be thicker and have more volume so i'm going to select these two objects enter edit mode and just do a very very simple adjustment i hit alt s and with alt s i just inflate the entire thing <laughs> which is you know you couldn't do anything simpler to to edit like a, a part and you know it's quite a big big edit if you look at it at the before and after but you know the details kind of end up working out like you know we didn't really destroy anything here and while we're at it let's also just quickly uh, touch these parts a little bit and I was thinking that for the for the like I won't do much additional detail actually here but I will do a quick copy of this ring and try to fill the remaining area a little bit in with um, some volume. Uh, I'm also going to be using, what material do you have here, number four. I'm going to be using a gray material here. So I just wanted something here to fill in this uh, empty area. Something thick like this. Uh, so you know, when you get a also, I'm going to use Shift N to recalculate the normals here. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is exactly why we we recalculate normals. Uh, without recalculating them, something like this might happen. But if I hit Shift N and recalculate my normals so that the way the the direction in which the faces are facing, then it knows in which direction to push push geometry out. <coughs> So, you know, we won't really be seeing this much. Um, but it's always better to have something there, just in case. So I'm just going to throw in a little bit of a volume there. Okay, something like that should be good enough. That just gives us a little bit of something <laughs> in there, basically. Should should we ever get a glimpse of that? So that fixes this issue. We have the hair done, and finally we want to look at this part in the back. Now with in the snapping mode to set to increment, I'm just going to hold Control while moving this out by exactly one meter. So it's easy to put it back in. That's the basic idea. Uh, or you could just isolate it by hiding everything else. But instead of remaking this entirely, I decided to. Uh, I wanted to edit it to reach the point that we want to reach. So let's delete our subdivision surface modifier and let's start editing. Um, I am in fact going to um, delete the back side. Uh, let's try that quickly. It's a bit tricky to select all of these edges, let's just do it manually. There you go. And once you select all the edges surrounding an area, 
you can go to select loops loop in a region and then we can just delete the faces here and now I'm just going to uh, yes relax this line and hit the spacing button and I'm not going to do it at full strength let's just set this to 50% spacing relax um, and again relax space did we hit the right buttons? <laughs> I think I hit relax twice uh, so it should look something like this it's just a bit smoother <clears throat> Um, and from here on, we just have to to do the details a little bit, I believe. It's still a bit messy. I'm just trying to bring this all into a state where it's a bit more workable. Just trying to smooth out the lines and, and so forth. There's also no reason for this to be so far in the back. Um, Yeah, so without doubt this part is a little bit messy. And I'm I'm rushing it a little bit admittedly since, you know, I don't want these videos to take forever. But it is nothing nothing impossible to clean up something like this. It's quite doable. So, relax and spacing here will be your best friends in in doing this. In this case, I also like to use flatten to, you know, bring them in to line them up in one direction. So by hitting a combination of these these tools, these buttons, <coughs> very quickly you you get to a point where it looks quite smooth. And from here on, um, so well basically one of the reasons why I focus so much on smoothing it all out is because I want to now add a bunch of new subdivisions. So yeah, it would be even more of a mess if we don't clean up first. Uh, before that, I quickly want to merge my the tips of these hair strands to to a point. Just selecting the two points and use the M shortcut for the merge menu. And then we'll need to add a few subdivisions. So that's the last one here. And then a bit similar to what we did before. So here we actually have already a line, so that's fine. But from here onwards we don't. So what I will do is I go in here and make a cut and I try to connect it to somewhere nearby like this. Uh, and then I go to the next strand and uh, be careful that you properly snap to the tip. And then you do that again. Just make sure you don't always snap at the same level together. So this time I go all the way to the top. Uh, this time maybe we can try to only, um, but I guess I'll do this one by itself since this one is really pointing into this direction. So instead I'm going to do something like this here and you just go like that on and on till you are through with all of your strands. Um, so we're basically converting um, this to like a, the, the kind of standard that we have already st set with the other parts. Uh, let's go a bit further until here and a few last changes. And finally this one already has like a subdivision here so I'm just going to leave it here. And now uh, you'll realize we still have these points here. So we'll need to delete all of these points next. Let's select all these in between points and delete them. And from here we can similarly to what we had before just fill in these spaces. It's a bit, uh, a bit tedious takes a little bit of time, but you do need to tell Blender which points should be connected. You're going to see a bunch of um, normal artifacts here as you're doing this, but that is something we can easily fix later, so nothing to worry about now. A 
it's kind of like a video game where you where you have to get good at, <laughs> at aiming like a first person shooter or something <laughs> maybe you can train your skills like that this is actually one of the reasons why i find it so difficult to model with other tools like maya or so i'm, I'm pretty sure that blender has a much wider radius where you can select something like even if i click here it will always select like what's the closest uh, and you only need to be within a, like a 30 pixel radius or something so I can very easily go and also when there's when there's multiple points like here uh, let's say I want to select uh, let's say this point clicking on it is possible but if you're a little bit off you might select the other one instead if I click here I know that this point is the closest to it so I actually end up aiming like next to it and also aiming next to it is a good idea because then you can actually see the point and you don't lose sight of it. <laughs> okay, that's just a, a side story. <laughs> but but yeah, that's that's just something I noticed. <laughs> so I never click on the point. If you if you slow down the video and and like take a look, you'll notice that I almost never click on the vertex itself. I always click next to it. Um, I mean, I end up clicking on it quite a bit, actually, but but that's not really what I'm aiming for. Alright. Sometimes, uh, I'm just going to tell stories now at this point, as <laughs> the list is done. <laughs> Sometimes when I work next to people, and I model and, and I do poly modeling. I always so self, uh, what is it called? Like I, I feel worried that um, that people would be annoyed at the amount of mouse clicks that I make. Like if I if I consciously think about the sound of the mouse clicks, it, it starts to be so annoying. <laughs> uh, I've definitely hit the button now a couple of hundred times. Anyway, we're done. Now you'll see some shading artifacts. What you want to do here is hit Shade Smooth again and select everything and hit uh, Shift N to recalculate the normals just in case. Uh, now the geometry is pretty much ready. We can also go ahead and quickly do the shading fix. So I'm just going to select all these edges one more time. And then hit Control E and and set them to sharp. Now let's see if I have missed anything. Uh, I don't think so. So I hit Control E. Let's just like this. It doesn't really matter. Mark sharp. So if you go now to this setting and enable Auto Smooth and just set this to really high, you should be able to have these all kind of smooth. But of course, they're still a bit messy. So from here on, it's just a matter of going in here and um, nicely interpolating between the tip and the root. You can actually do this quite well in an automated way with these tools here. Um, so yeah, there's always a couple of steps to this. Actually, I guess this is going to end up taking <laughs> taking up the rest of the, the, re the remaining time of this video. Um, so not much additional progress here, but I guess it was a bit of a tricky part, so I didn't want to leave you guys completely alone uh, with this one. Um, I still hope though that the other parts of the hair were no issue for you. Uh, so I didn't show, I only showed in the time lapse how I worked on the sides. So. Yeah, it's not too complex of an object, so I'm pretty sure you'll be able to figure it out. And meanwhile, I'm hoping that the mouse clicks are not getting annoying to you. <laughs> it's quite a lot of clicks. Uh, yeah, sometimes you might want to look from a different perspective as well, because this one was quite, quite messed up. I mean, quite sharp. You can go ahead and, you know, add a few more subdivisions and try to make it smoother. But I try to keep it low resolution as well. 
and also since this is for a game and hopefully we'll have animation and stuff um, you'd be surprised how much you can get away with actually especially in flat shading as what we're going to try to do with this one uh, with, with the tune shader and everything it's actually not too um, too obvious these artifacts so um, if you're beginning and this is also something I'm trying to do through this video don't try to be too much too perfection like too much of a perfectionist since it's much more important that you finish your project and you know feel happy about having finished something rather than um, always feeling dissatisfied and trying for more and not being able to achieve it uh, that's just a little little advice try to keep your I mean I don't know <laughs> I'm saying kind of the opposite of what I'm doing myself actually like I, I tend to set my goals way too high and aim for a lot and it's always frustrating but I, I don't know I'm just stubborn and I never give up so it's not always very very fun <laughs> to admit so I'm personally trying to maybe enjoy my work a little bit more and that's one thing that I do so I just hope you won't run into stuff like that uh, I'm just telling you it can actually look quite good even without <coughs> it being all super perfect so ideally of course you would want this to be really smooth and interpolated and big maps and stuff <coughs> but um, this definitely falls into good enough so so that's that uh, now that this part is finished let's just move it back with our snapping by exactly one meter that should bring it right back to where it was and we might have to fix just a little bit of um, we can use proportion editing just some intersections let's move this out smoothly just a little bit we can try to oh yeah this is also intersecting basically uh, line this up a little bit better and the other side looks fine looks fine all right there we go basically this is all the hair done for this character and we're good to go so what's next <laughs> Um, good question. I'm going to think about it and we'll see in the next part. So I hope you enjoyed it all and yeah, we're very close to, to finishing kind of, or, or like, you know, going to the next big big phase of this character. Very close to, to going there. And, oh yeah, I think we need to add a belt still. Do we have time today? No, let's not do it today. Um, yeah, what was I saying? I hope you enjoyed this video. And in the next part, we'll continue to work on this character. See you soon. <laughs>